When I recently bricked my ultra sexy, ultra rare, ultra expensive, all black millennium edition Contax G2, I obviously had to seriously consider selling my organs to buy a replacement. But then I saw this as an opportunity to kill my darlings. This is a concept that was first published over 100 years ago and it encourages you to destroy things, particularly in art, of which one is fond and thereby conflicted about. Basically, if there's something that you're doing that's working and it's become easy, you should push yourself to do something else because you'll be forced to learn something new and you'll be better overall as a result. So here's four of, oh, I shouldn't hit the table. What do you call that, Dal? Sponge cake. Beautiful. So here's four of my photography darlings that I'm going to murder, just like Daryl Kerrigan murders a sponge cake. Beautiful. So the first one is to do with lenses and focal lengths. So more specifically, swapping from the classic street photography staple that is the 28 millimeter lens. Um, and I've swapped the 28 millimeter lens for an absolute eyesore of a beast which is in the form of this buckled 70 to 200 mil Canon. So everyone knows the only way to really shoot street photography is on a camera porn camera and only with a 28 millimeter lens because that's the most similar to what we see through the human eye. So I've severed ties with something that I know works well for me, but it's in the hopes of finding some divine enlightenment. Now, what I didn't say goodbye to, however, was a massive pile of cash. And I was fortunate enough to actually have a 70 to 200 mil collecting dust in the cupboard. It has no image stabilization. You can buy this lens for about $500 Australian, so about 350 US. And to the disgust of my inner street photography purist, I hit the street with this ridiculous Canon Canon in hand. And I can say 100% I am in love. And this is definitely the beginning of my Ernst Haas era with the long lens. Um, it's just a completely different way of shooting than I've ever done before, and I absolutely love it. Which brings me to point two. So instead of buying a new Contax G2 body, I went through this amazing website that Canon's put together, and I found the last SLR that they made before they moved to DSLRs. So um, they've got comparable, if not better specs than the G2, and costs basically nothing in comparison to the cooler alternatives that are on the market. So in short, I found myself a Contax G2 replacement for one tenth of the price. So $250 versus $2,500. So that's a saving of about 100 rolls of Portra 400, which as a film shooter, I'm gonna take that option every time. Let me introduce you to the Canon 7S Elan. It's uh, known by a few different names in different parts of the world, but like, subscribe, and my next video, I'm gonna break down all the ways in which that camera is actually far superior to the Contax G2. If that's not enough darling murdering for you. So still life versus street. So point three for me is about how documenting the human condition, which you know street photography is supposed to be all about. Um, it doesn't actually have to be just photos of humans. So that might've been uh, quite obvious for some people, but for me, I was taking street photos, I was taking street photography of people. But what I realized is I actually really enjoy taking these more abstract sort of still life images, which I hadn't really done too much before. For so long, I took the traditional street photography photos. These images with the long lens, it feels like it's a style of photo that I've been trying to take for years but I've been trying to take them with the wrong equipment. So even though I did have the 90 mil uh, sitting in the G2 case the whole time that I could have put on the contacts, um, it just remained untouched because I thought I was a purist. And it's really counterintuitive because part of being a street photographer is looking ahead of you, identifying elements that will make a good photo before they enter your frame. And so I've often found myself looking ahead, seeing things which together make a really strong image, but with a 28 millimeter, they're just, they don't exist. They absolutely disappear in the frame. So being able to take these photos that you know, I can see all these elements come together, but wasn't able to actually grasp that I could take these photos. It's, um, 
been really eye-opening for me. And actually, for the longest time, I was looking back through my old photos and I thought for so long that I've just been obsessed with scale and offsetting small elements in the frame against, you know, grand dramatic backdrops and things like that. But I realized now I was just using the wrong lens and I should have had my Ernst Haas era maybe five years ago. <laughs> Number four, my final darling is to do with shooting wide versus tall so shooting landscape is undeniably what street photographers will predominantly shoot again this is how we perceive the world our field of view uh, is wider for our horizontal gaze than it is for our vertical now narrowing that focus with the 70 to 200 millimeter lens i found myself drifting towards shooting more portrait than landscape i'm not sure why I think the elements are just more balanced. You can get better lines. You can get just more organization in a tall image for some reason. That's what I found so far, at least. So my advice to you, have a look back through your work. What are some limiting beliefs that you are either consciously holding on to? You know that you're you're trying to be this certain thing. Um, or upon review, what's something that you notice that unconsciously you've actually been doing for so long that you don't even question it anymore? And what would your process look like if you were to try and do the exact opposite? Just remove it completely. So in conclusion to all of this, overall, I'm so glad that I've done this um, by suppressing the overuse of all the things that I thought made my photography what it is and made it successful. I've actually found a whole new visual vocabulary and... I can't wait to experiment within these confines more until I want to break them. So let me know down below what ideas you're stuck on that you want to change or that you want to break. What darlings can you kill off within your practice? If you've got ideas for me as well, just based off seeing what you've seen today, let me know those. I'd love to steal your ideas.